Welcome back to Magic and the Noise. Today we're going to take a quick overview of a session that I did as part of the Special Five. The target here was the Voynich Manuscript kept in the Yale Library. And so this is one of the targets that we worked as a group. Sasha did an amazing job. In my opinion, when I saw her drawing, it's essentially calling target, which I thought was amazing. If I understand correctly, they haven't fully understood the purpose of the manuscript. Is that correct? That's correct. So they, they've had all kinds of linguists and cryptographers, and now they've even applied AI to it to try to decode the language. And there's a father and son team that are using ancient Turkish to see if they can decode it, but they haven't been able to translate it. The closest anyone's come is the Turkish uh, father-son team. And even then, there's a lot of debate about whether their translations are accurate or not. And in your particular session work, it's not only that you were able to draw the actual target, the book, on a pedestal, which I, if I'm not mistaken, it actually is on a pedestal literally in one of these museums. When I saw that, I was just like, wow. In terms of the data that you pulled through beyond the imagery, you had some concepts, I think, associated with maybe chanting. It really came through as empty chants, empty of meaning. <laughs> when I probed okay. deeper, I got the concept of this was something that was simplified, oversimplified, and then reduced to like a child level. So I really had the sense of like, this is just a story. And that makes me think now that this was, I mean, some people theorize about the Voynich manuscript that it was an artistic project. But an artist just did this as a, you know, it was an era when these kinds of ooh, mystical texts maybe were more popular. So do you think it was used as a way to fake information to generate money? Or do you think it was a proxy of some type, like a decoy, uh, as an example? Do you think it was something like that? Yeah. Or do you think it was more? I do think it's old. Just because, I, you know, I had the candlelight, I could smell maybe something like beeswax candles, but not like the beeswax candles that I know, right? So yeah. so I think it was olden times, uh, medieval kind of times, but I really did have the sense that the text itself, I think it was an art project. And now people are looking for all these secrets in it and, and I don't think there are any. What's interesting, I think, is that the tasker had used for our feedback a site that was, I think it was something like the holybook.com website of some kind that had yeah. the images of it. And I picked up on Krishna, our holy book. So the words holy book came through. And I just think it's funny that that was just the name of the website where the pages are posted. Yeah, which again gets into the interesting aspects of target feedback and how it can influence or bleed through into session work, whether it's accurate data or not, meaning the feedback itself is you know, written information or somebody's thoughts, that kind of thing, uh, it still can influence uh, the, the session in terms of the feedback aspect. And I think so can the environment because I uh, went to the Yale library where the book is kept through my remote viewing, but I also went to other sites that were around it. It's such a, a fascinating architectural mystery. And when you really look closely, there's a lot of Egyptian influence and there's one of the oldest cemeteries that, that are there, clearly created by a secret society with an Egyptian arch saying, and the dead shall be raised on it. One of the things that came through really strongly that was really fascinating to me was this wheel, the wheel of time, the wheel of karma, the wheel of life. And I think that that, rather than being related to the Voynich manuscript, I think that was because it was so shiny that there was this secret society doing something right beside that library. So you don't think that the secret society itself was associated with the book, the, the Voynich no. manuscript? Okay. Earlier in my session, I did describe the library. I kept, I had this, the sound mm -hmm. of shh, quiet. And yeah. in the library yeah. that I drew and described, I clearly had that it was in the children's section. So it was really coming <laughs> through as a children's right. book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. And and it is fascinating because it's not only did you draw the, the book itself on a pedestal, which, again, just blows my mind when I see that, uh, considering what the target actually is, you did have all this extra uh, context kind of information associated with the book. And uh, that's the other thing that makes your work so strong. Yeah, I thought you did a great job on this. Thank you, David. And I did want to point one thing out. When I was doing it, on the page where I was drawing the book, on the dais or on the pedestal and getting all this really accurate data. 
it felt, and I wrote this down, it felt more like free association than RV data collection. Like, uh, I think this was one of these rare sessions in my beginning intermediate stage of remote viewing where the data starts pouring through. And okay. at that point, that felt different to me at that point. I, I, up until then, I think yeah. I, I had to work harder for the data. But yeah. here, I think, was one of the first instances where the data was pouring through. And it was so novel as an experience to me yeah. that I wrote it down like something's weird. Like the data is just coming through. It feels more like this kind of free association rather than, oh, what is that? And what is this? What does it sound like? And so it was nice to get the feedback and see that because I didn't trust that. I was like, that was a really weird experience. I don't know what yeah. to make of it. And then the fact that that was the most accurate page in my session, <laughs> I think I learned from that to like, when the data pours through, trust it, right? Yeah, and that's the value of self-analysis uh, through this process. It's uh, very important, especially when you're dealing with something like the signal, which is extremely difficult as a beginner, even intermediate or advanced to lock on to understand what it is and how it feels uh, because there's no, <laughs> it's, it's it's not a physical skill, so that's the part. It's all internal. That's the part that makes it difficult. So that that is amazing that you were able to experience that um, in this session. And I'm, I'm very grateful to have had a group to work with. I think that, for me, made the big difference here. That's really what pushed me. And and just, you know, having fun and, and not having pressure on these, you know, it was it was a fun group environment, and I learned a lot. So, so yeah, so thank you for for taking the time to, to look at my session. So as we wrap this up, uh, for any of you out there, remote viewers that have actually run this target as well and want to share your session work with us, uh, or you see correlations between your work and our work, please reach out to us or make comments in this video. We'd love to see it. And if you have your own theories about uh, how to decode the Voynich manuscript, yeah, do leave a comment down below because uh, we're interested. So thank you so much. Bye. Bye.